Alright everyone, now that you have a good idea of what this castle looks like on the outside, as well as the planning that went into the castle, I want to show you the incredible interior inside this castle. As we continue inside the castle, we're presented with a lot of rooms. These rooms are all divided up into different sections that all serve different functions. When building castle interiors, there are five tips that I would like you guys to keep in mind. The first of which is to divide your space into rooms. So instead of having just an empty shell of a castle, the builders have divided this castle into several different rooms, each room serving a different function and purpose. Dividing up the rooms is really going to help you to detail the castle. It allows you to think about the purpose of each individual room, it allows you to change up the ceiling, the wallpaper, as well as the flooring as you go out through each room. It makes it so much more realistic. For each castle, when you're thinking about the rooms, you should think about their purpose. That is tip number two. Before you begin anything, plan out which room is going to have what purpose. And if you're stuck on what to do, think about what purpose the castle that you're building would have. If your castle is for defense, does it need watchtowers, armories? Whereas if your castle is for living, sort of like a mansion, it needs a kitchen, fireplaces, living rooms, a ballroom. I could really go on forever about the amount of rooms that you can put in your castle, but you use your imagination and figure out what yours is going to need. Next in line, we have the lighting. In real castles, houses, or any interior really, you have these windows, and the windows allow a lot of light through. However, that's not necessarily the case in Minecraft, so you need to think about how the viewer is going to be able to see the room. Hidden lighting is a great way to do this. Let me show you how the builders of this castle have done some amazing hidden lighting tricks. Let's start over here. How is this room being lit up? We have a lot of lighting in here. And they've used redstone torches. Now, redstone torches don't emit a ton of light. Let's put one down here. See, not a lot compared to a regular torch. Let's compare that to a regular torch. Yeah, that provides a lot more lighting. So we know that all the lighting is not coming from these redstone torches. Where's it coming from? Well, look what I see over here, a carpet. There we go, we've got a sea lantern under there and that is a fantastic way to hide some lighting in little sneaky corners. Now, what are the other transparent blocks in Minecraft? Let's see. We have carpet, magma blocks, we've got anvils. There's an anvil right there. And it almost completely covers up this sea lantern. I mean, without pointing it out, would you really have paid that much attention to it? I don't think it looks bad at all having a sea lantern under there. And that's a great way to have lighting over here by this window. Magma blocks are a great way to get lighting. Magma blocks emit the level of light that you put near them, so you can set the magma blocks to emit as much light as you need. What else could be transparent in this room? Well, I see something. Look at this sneaky hopper up here. It's completely covered up, that sea lantern. What a great way to get a lot of light up in that ceiling. And that is something the builder has done quite a lot throughout this entire castle. Let's keep looking for more examples. Let's go down this stairwell here and see how they've lit up the basement. Now, notice the block change right here? And it's not that noticeable, but there's definitely light coming from here, isn't there? These are pistons, and underneath these pistons, there is lighting. And that is how the builder has hidden some lighting under here. Let me show you. Look at that, a sea lantern directly and under the piston. The piston allows light all the way through. <laughs> what a fantastic way to detail. Let's look around this room some more. They've done some fantastic storage shelves here. And if we come through here, we've got that lighting again and also these, this gorgeous wine cellar. I love the look of this, this wine rack over here and all of these barrels. I also like the fact that when you've come down into the basement of the castle, they have not lit up the ceiling. It makes the room seem a lot more dingy, even though there is some lighting down here. I think that's a wonderful way to do the lighting and to sort of trick the observer. Let's come over here into the great hall. Now this is such a massive room, but it's been so well detailed and also really well lit up. Look at this, we can see the details in the ceiling and look how incredible the detail is here. I mean, they've just done so much with this room and you'll notice this room is not straight. This room is on an angle. Imagine how difficult it would be to detail this. 
The builder has used so many different hidden lighting tricks here. There's one here with a trap door, and with 1.13 you have so many more trap door options now to hide lighting. You also have the piston trick, once again, right here, so well hidden in the corner. You wouldn't even really notice it from the ground. I mean, look. It doesn't look like there's lighting up there, but it does so well to accent these beams that are up here and it really makes this grand hall look so much more grand. So, now you've got your lighting, your interior is divided into rooms, and you've thought about some purpose or function that these rooms could have. What is the next step? Well, let's think about getting some walls and ceilings in this place. So when you're putting in walls and ceilings, you'll notice that each of these rooms have different color walls and ceilings. And the builder has been able to do this because they've done double thick walls. So you can see there's a wallpaper change from this room to the next. And it allows this really amazing feel in each of these rooms so that all the rooms are able to be different. You can see we come into the kitchen here, they've also changed out the flooring type we have here and done a wonderful little divide with a stair. And in order to divide the wallpaper in these types of rooms, in the archway to the entrance, they've done some logs. And I think this is such a wonderful way to detail that and make it it's such a subtle difference. I mean, you'd hardly even notice that, but it really does make such a massive difference to your interior if you do different types of walls and ceilings. Let's see, as we go up here, we're getting even more of these differences, and in here you get these gorgeous high ceilings. As we transition into this room over here, we're gonna get these grand ceilings in the king's room. These differences in your walls and ceilings make all the difference. See these slopes that they've done here with stairs and slabs? That adds such a nice variation in height, and these little curves, maybe not something you would think of on your own, but it really makes a difference to the room. And think about it, when you're coming from here into this, it just feels so much more grand and open. Even though this space, if it was maybe just a regular square with a perfectly square ceiling, it may not seem quite as large. I love the details that the builder has added in here. It really makes such an amazing difference. Because the builder has done double thick walls and ceilings, we get to have wooden floors up on the second floor. And below, they get to have white ceilings. What a fantastic little trick. Let me just phase through the wall here. Let's see. You see, when we come down here, we have these gorgeous white ceilings popping all the way through, and now we've got wooden floors. That is definitely something that you should think about when doing your interiors, if you have the right amount of space. And also dividing it up into different rugs like this can make such a difference for your flooring, as well as for your ceiling, such as adding little details like these lines going throughout, instead of only adding chandeliers or lighting. It can make such a massive difference, and it really helps out the overall effect of your castle. So now we've got our castle all figured out. We have the rooms divided up, we have walls, we have ceilings, we know the room's purpose, all the rooms have good lighting. Well, what is next? What it could possibly be tip number five? Tip number five is to be consistent with your detailing. There are so many subtle consistencies throughout this entire palace. For example, we have the same rugs going throughout, as well as the same furniture. See, they've used the same blocks throughout different rooms. Although there are differences in rooms that have different purposes, such as the kitchen, you can see throughout that these plants, and as well as the shelving, are being consistent in many different rooms. This allows you to feel like you're in one building, not that you're moving from one castle to the next. You want to make sure that you're staying within the same era as well. Moving through this castle has just been so incredible. There's so many little details and pieces of inspiration that you guys should be able to pick up on. I'm going to show you guys around the interior a little more, but I hope you've enjoyed my five tips on how to make a wonderful castle interior. Throughout the castle, there are so many little nooks and crannies, such as these little closet spaces and storage spaces all throughout. The builder have also done an amazing job with all of the bedrooms. They all have this consistent bed shape. Look at this. This bed and this bed over here are extremely similar, but they are different colors. So you allow subtle differences to get in so that everything's not the exact same, but also make the furniture look like it's at least belonging in the same castle. 
As we travel up the stairs, we get more of these suits of armor throughout the hallways, as well as very colorful transitions to different rooms. We have these larger, grand rooms that could be for the royalty that lives in the castle. But below, we also have quarters for the servants. Here is an example of a grand kitchen. So this is a room where the servants would have prepared meals for the king and queen and their royalty, maybe for big parties in the great hall or in the ballroom. What a fantastic look this has with all of the different fireplaces and counter space. I just, I love it so much. Down here is where we would have the quarters for the servants. So upstairs, you notice we transitioned from room to room quite quickly. We had a lot of furniture in each room. Whereas down in the servant quarters, we have these long hallways that seem a little bit more empty. This is a really nice touch and really shows the transition from the upper class in the castle to the lower class. I also love the differences in the beds. So in the servant quarters, they don't get their own beds. They have to share rooms as well as share beds with the other servants. And the touch of using hay bells here is such a nice effect. It looks so much less rich and exotic than the beds upstairs. I absolutely love that. Another small tip that I can give you based on walking around here is to fill up your space. So you see, instead of having a blank wall here, they've added a bookshelf, maybe a planter, some different paintings, shelving, things to fill in space and make it seem a lot less empty. But this is not the case in all spaces. For example, if we transition out here, this is a ballroom. A ballroom would be for hosting balls and dances and you don't want this to be filled with massive long tables, you want it to be an open space. I absolutely love the details they've done here to the ceiling and to the walls and it definitely makes up for the fact that the room is completely empty. It just looks so wonderful. I can just imagine all of the royalty dancing around this room. All right, everyone, thank you for taking the time to explore this castle with me. It's been so much fun. I absolutely love this castle and have been able to get so much inspiration from it for my own builds. I hope you guys enjoyed the tips on building interiors and find them useful for your own builds. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.